Hello again, my name is John Cherry. Welcome back to this tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to create our first site master and implement our first master page. And what I have right here, let me close out some of these, is I have a site master that came default with this scaffold website. And I kind of want to show you it, and then we're going to create our own. So in the scaffold website, as you can see, I have a site.master down here. Uh, don't worry about this ASP placeholder or some of these other items as far as the bundle reference. We'll go into those later in the tutorial series. But And also don't worry about the script manager. When we go over Ajax, we'll discuss this as far as how our JavaScript files will load. But right now, this is a site master page. And what we have essentially in the site master is kind of a layout, right? And as you can see, it has a default navigation bar navigation right here and this will be carried on into every ASPX page subsequent to this one that inherits from it and the only thing that is placed in here is you have a content placeholder main content so let's take for example we have the site master we have it auto wired by auto wired up it inherits from site master so it has a code behind file e, this is the default code behind for the scaffold website as far as going against anti-forgery tokens you can implement your own but this is it has just like a regular ASPX page a code behind file so keep that in mind so if we go to a page that inherits from it let's say default.aspx as you can see up here in the directive you have a title home page C sharp the master page is site.master so as you can see from the master page file it inherits from site.master and as you can see the ASP content placeholder right here the content placeholder that inher inherits from is main content is the ID so if you go back to site master and look at this the content placeholder its ID is main ID these much match between the site master page and the page that inherits from it the ASPX page so I want to show you this page before I go any further because we're gonna you know duplicate it so if we go right-click our default.aspx page, view in browser, you can see this is what our application will look like. It's using that bootstrap template we had, the Lumen template, shrinks accordingly, looks good on a phone, right? So this is the layout. So let's say, for example, I'm going to take out the elements in my content page, right? So let's just shrink that. And I have that stuff here, so let's kind of remove all this stuff let's comment it out right here and then let's look at our page and then what do we get we get nothing and we have a little something right there um, I believe that's filtering from the site master page here so and that's essentially this right here so let's just remove that too real quick I think that's it all right and then essentially what we have inherited is our navigation right here. So the, as you can see right here, this nav bar, which in, is implementing the bootstrap libraries, the default page right here is inheriting from this. So this navigation will appear on every subsequent page that inherits from it. So just want to kind of give you the lowdown of how that looks. So let's go ahead, let's uncomment this, and then let's go back and uncomment this. And now we're going to create our own first master page. So what we'll do here, you'll right click on your solution. You'll say add new item. And we want to create a site master. So let's create, let's see where it's at. Site master. Sometimes it's crazy when you're looking for these. Master page. Judge master page where are you sometimes it's crazy to find it um, where's the master page um, I must be blind here there it is so sometimes you get confused you look for it so you have the master page right here let's name this one main master right so we'll click add one thing I also remember is right there, we have our main master right here. In default, it has a content placeholder for the head, 
and content placeholder here. So some quick uh, items I want to add to this, right? I'm going to remove this content placeholder here. We're going to try to duplicate our previous one. So the first thing I want to do without using all those scripts and loading those scripts uh, using the script manager, I'm going to load the bootstrap JS. I'm going to get our basic ones in here that we need. I'm going to get our basic bootstrap CSS here. I'm going to add our site.css and I'm going to add jQuery before that. So let's do jQuery.js because jQuery has to load before um, before Bootstrap to be able to enable it. So we have all this set up here. So if we go back to our site master here, let's go ahead and take just the navigation bar from here. I just want to take this little navigation right here. So let's take this right here so that we can implement that in our main master. So let's go ahead and remove this div here. And remember, always when you're implementing an ASPX page or a master page, you always have to have the form tag run at server. So we got that there, right? So that's implemented. Now, what we want to do, since we have our master page, now we want to inherit, create an ASPX page that inherits from this master page. So let's go ahead and let's create an ASPX page. So we're going to say add new item. And we could have went here too when we add new item. We could have found our master page here too, just FYI. So let's, instead of add new item, we're going to add a new web form. And let's put master main inherit. Uh, let's just say master main. So we have our master main right here, right? And uh, one thing I forgot to do, let me, let me show you this. Let me delete this. And we could always add it up here, which one it inherits from, but I want to delete that and show you that. So if you go here, add, and if you do it that way, you can't put declare as far as what it inherits from. Let's add new item and let's go to a web form. And then we want to select the master page that it inherits from. So let's put main master for our ASPX page. And then we want to pick main.master as what we inherit from. So automatically what happens from there is that we have our ASP content that is found in our main master. Um, we go right here, main.master. And as you can see right here in our content placeholder one, matches here. So it automatically creates that inheritance. So it eliminates you having to actually do one, write all that code. We could have just went up here and put master page file and then put the tilde as far as its directory and put it right there. But I just want to create that for you so you can see. So now let's view this in browser before we do anything else. Remember with uh, master pages, you cannot view them in browser. So go to your ASPX page and look what we got there. Look at that. We have already all those items right there. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go back here. So we have our main master here. And look what we got there. So we have the same navigation that's being inherited from all those items there, as you can see. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, let me just show you something real quick. If I put in my uh, ASPX page, watch this. So what's going to happen? Let's just put hello. Refresh the page. Uh, did I close it out? Oh, I got this open. Let me close that. And I guess I did not leave it open. So let's view in browser. Now, what do we have here? Where is it at? I guess it did not. So let's create in our main master here, which it should inherit from. Let's create a break here. And let's view that again. And for some reason, it's not writing. And it's probably because of the padding associated with it. So let's go back to our site master here. See what we put inside of this. And let's create a div for our section here. And sometimes that's what causes it, you know, causes the issue there is that we have not enough padding around it. So let's go to our main master here. Create this and then close the div out there. And then let's throw our site.css here too. Oh, we already have it up there. So let's try that now. 
and it still is not writing out what I wanted to write out. Funny. So then let's go here and let's actually just take the default ASPX here. Let's take this right here. Let's put that on our main master right here. Let's see if that does. Boom. Okay, so probably because of the padding associated with it, that's the issue. So what essentially we did was we replicated what we had in the previous one. So let's actually take this out here. I'm going to close it off here. And then let's make that commented out there. And I want to show you this. So what we have here essentially, this is all going to be closed off, is that our master page here is essentially creating a structure for ourselves. So the structure we have, we have some of the basic libraries we're inheriting as far as our bootstrap. We have our navigation. This navigation is being replicated inside of all the pages that inherit from this master page, right? So if we were to take out, let's say for example, this right here, and then look what will happen. Now what happens across our page? Nothing. We do not have the navigation. So now only our ASPX page is rendering with nothing default coming out of our master page except this break statement and the content placeholder and the div that holds the content placeholder. So let's go back at our navigation. And that's just, you know, and I want to show you this is that the reason why you would implement master pages is that anything you want to duplicate across your web application that is redundant or is going to go across each one of these pages instead of having to implement this navigation bar in each page you have one general master page and each of your subsequent pages inherit from that master page to make it easier for you to maintain the template of your website or web application it creates it makes the work easier for you for maintenance and this is all we want to accomplish when we develop our ASP.NET websites or web applications and implement this web form structure. I want to thank you for joining me in this tutorial series and in the next one I will actually discuss web user controls. Have a nice day.